After watching this Figma tutorial on grids, you will know exactly how to use columns and rows in your designs to make them more structured and pixel perfect. Also, make sure you stick till the end to see how I personally set it up for responsive design. Now, let's go. All right, so we're in Figma. Let's talk about grids and in particular rows and columns. I'll start with the rows, then we'll go over to columns and then we'll see how columns are treated when we're doing responsive design. So rows are what we use for the vertical axis. And why do we use rows? Well, because of vertical consistency and the snapping help we get for our eight point grid system. And if you don't know what I'm talking about when I'm saying eight point grid system, check this video because I could highly recommend you actually starting to use the eight point grid system when designing. It's super helpful for consistency. But so the vertical consistency here, you can see we have 16 pixels, 16 pixels. This really helps us when we want our designs to look like they're built with purpose. So 16, 16, it could be 24, it could be 32. It could be any number really that you want to use. I'm sticking to the eight point grid system, like I said, but any number you want to use, but you're sticking to the rows you've set up. That's the first point, vertical consistency. And the second point kind of is about the same thing. It helps you snap according to the row system you set up. As you can see here, when I move my items, they're snapping to this eight point grid. So 16, snapping to 24, snapping to 32 which is really helpful if you want to make sure that you're not missing by a pixel or two here and there. Let's talk about how we set it up and what the settings generally would be. So when I set it up, or when anybody sets it up in Figma, this is how it works, but my settings might differ from others. You do it how you want to, but the first thing you do is you go to the right sidebar, click Layout Grid, hit the plus, change to Rows, you choose a count. Um, the count is really just for you to make sure that you cover the full height of your frame. I'll pick 100 and it disappeared. And that's because we need to change the type to top so that it aligns to the top. I'll change the height of our rows to eight pixel. Once again, because of the eight point grid system. And we have the gutter. I'll change that to eight pixel as well. And now if we create something in here, so let's create something like this. And see how it helps us snap according to this new row grid we've set up. So that's quite handy. What we do as a last thing is we create a style out of it because then we don't have to recreate it every single time. So I would take this grid, I'll just copy it over here for the sake of it. You could do that as well. You could just copy it to every single frame, but it's easier to have one single style because then you can go to just that style and change it if you want to change it across the board. I'll go into the four points here or the four dots that says style when I hover over it, click that, hit the plus, and then I'll just say eight pixel row grid, create style. And there we have it. Now we can apply it to any new frame that we create. I'll go to the four dots, click it and boom, it's there. Then we have the 12 column layout and this is on the horizontal axis. Why do we use a 12 column system or a 12 column layout? Pretty simple in this case as well. First of all, it's the web standard. It's what we use on the web in 99% of the cases. And the second thing being that the number 12 is very easily divisible. So we can divide it by two, by three, by four, by six. Two main reasons for using it. Now, what type setting do we use for our columns? And when I say type setting, that's where we, in the previous row example, chose top instead of stretch. What do we typically use for columns? Well, it depends a bit. I would say that we only have to focus on two in this tutorial. And in general, I'm only using one and I'll get to that. So type center is generally how the web world works for desktop screens. And what type center does is that it locks in our container. So the container kind of being this 12 column grid layout, it locks it in. So it doesn't stretch or shrink or increase in size or decrease in size as we change the size of our frame. You can see here, just stays put the same size. Now, there's a problem with using type center. You can see here that the container says 1144 pixels here. The standard would be 1140 pixels. With the center setting, you can't use half pixels and you don't use that anywhere in the real web world either. So it makes sense that you can't use it, but you also can't set the 
entire width for all of these columns combined. So we can't set the exact container size here and we lose some pixel accuracy. So that's why I typically, and we'll get to this, I typically don't use the center option, even though that's how the web world works for everything desktop and above. Not everything, but in most cases. Now type stretch is generally how the web world works for tablet and below. How that works is just like you see here, the container becomes fluid and it goes with the size of your frame. But like I said, in Figma, I usually use stretch regardless of device for the pixel accuracy so that I can get to 1140 pixels or whatever I want for my container size without having it be off by a pixel or two here and there. If we set it up, how do we set it up? It is basically the same as for rows. We go in here, we hit the plus, but we choose columns instead. When we've done that, it all depends on the container you want to have. So now we're talking about desktop here again. Usually you can stick to the 20 pixel cutter that you get from the start. The count in this case, we're gonna use 12, like we talked about, and the type, like I also said, is stretch. But the margin depends on the size of your container. So do you want your container to be 1140 pixels? Well, then the margin is gonna be 30. So we check here, margin is 30. If we're using a 960 pixel container, then the margin is gonna be 120 instead, 120. So the margin really depends on your container when it comes to desktop. And here we can also make a style out of it. Same process, we go to the four dots, hit plus, and then we name it how we want. You can be really specific, like you can take this name here, say all the setting details, so 12 call, 150 pixel margin, and it's gonna be then 1140 pixel container in a 1440 pixel frame. So we could go here, add that, copy and paste it in, now we have that style so that we can reuse it. One thing I wanna go into before we go over to the responsive layouts is to keep in mind that columns are guides. Generally, you don't wanna break them, but if you do, you should do it with intent. What I mean by that, first of all, as you can see here, we're using the columns to structure our content. So this column with, or sorry, this element here with text and buttons covers six columns. This image here, covers five columns, and there's a column in between those. If we go down a bit, you can see that these cards here, or these items, cover four columns each. But here, we break it. So this text that goes here breaks the whole column system, and that's by design, because it adds a nice look to it. But it is by design. We're thinking about it, we're doing it by purpose, or on purpose. Same with this. This is a carousel. And here the carousel goes outside of the column system by design. Same here, we have an image that goes outside of the column system by design. So when you're doing that, do it by design, not randomly. And don't ever design things doing like half columns. So like I did this container, which covers five and a half columns. Your developers are gonna cry if you do that. So please don't do that. Now, the last thing we're gonna cover is making columns responsive. So the standard here is 1284, which means that we're using 12 columns for desktop, eight columns for tablets, and four columns for mobile. You can go and check out material designs documentation. You can see that that's what they're using. So it's pretty safe to go that route. For desktop, you're using your standard margin and gutter, but for tablet, we usually go down, we decrease the margin a bit and the gutter a bit. The same for mobile, we decrease the margin and gutter even more because the content is going to be smaller, so we don't need as much spacing to work with. So the desktop settings would typically be a gutter of 20 pixels, a count of 12, and then the type stretch like we talked about. And the margin really, once again, depends on your container in this case. Is it 1140? Is it 960? Or something else. When it comes to tablet settings, and this we can do together, we'll set it up. So I'll add columns. So a count of eight, a gutter of 16 pixels, a margin of 32 pixels. That would be like the standard. That's usually what I'm using for landing pages and things like that. So now if we change the size of this, it's gonna be responsive and work in the way that we wish it to work. Same goes for mobile. We decrease it even more, like we said. I'll add a layout grid and columns. The count is gonna be four, 
the gutter is going to be 12 and the margin is going to be 12 also. Same thing here. Now it's responsive and it's going to stretch according to how we widen or tighten our frame. If you found this valuable, a like, a sub, a comment, everything helps. Now until the next one, take care and we'll talk soon. Ciao.